ओम ज्ञान निबंधस्य ज्ञानम जन शलाकय चक्षुर नील चंगी न थस महलाद महाराज न्यू हाउ थिंग्स आर टू बी डन ही वॉज नेवर टू बी मिस गाइडेड बाई एनी वन इवन बाई अ पर्सन टू हैपन टू बी हिज सो कॉल स्पिरिट योर मास्टर दिस इज द साइन ऑफ फुल सरेंडर भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर सेठ मारो भी राखो भी यो इच्छा तो हारा नित्य दास प्रति थुआ अधिकार When one surrenders to Lord Vishnu one must be prepared to abide by his orders in all circumstances whether he gives one or gives one protection Lord Vishnu must be worshiped in all circumstances Shukracharya was instructing Bali Maharaj and he was performing the sacrifice for him at these great sacrifices the kings would offer everything we find that Ram Chandra is described in Ram Leela he would give everything so he was just left with the clothes he was standing in and his wife sit up nothing but the clothes they were standing in they would give everything to the brahmins and then the brahmins would say well we don't want all this anyway it's too much trouble you take it all back you look after it so that was the idea that you offer everything and who is the yagyesha yagya yagyapati yagya bhuk vishnu is the enjoyer of all sacrifice the master of all sacrifice everything is offered to vishnu the materialistic people perform these sacrifices with the idea of getting something back it's a good business proposition you offer everything to vishnu and then he blesses you and you get more things back or even there are different kinds of sacrifices to demigods even then the yagya bhuk or yagyeshwar is vishnu shalakam shila must be there so when lord vishnu himself came and said i want something bali maharaj was very happy to give not only because shukracharya was teaching him like this but because he had heard from pralad maharaj who taught him to offer everything to vishnu now we'll find in the vedic literature there are many demons who also followed the vedic principles ravana was known as a great vedic scholar indrajit got power by performing yagyas on the battlefield sometimes they used to when they were fighting with the monkeys and ramachandra trying to train indrajit would go to the side and do some yagyas because he he would get more power to fight so the demons there also jarasandha was a great follower of the vedic principles like to give charity to the brahmins some like hiranyakashipu they stopped all the vedic principles but other rakshasas demons like ravana they were superficially following but they're caught in a quandary when the, the ravana will be following the vedic principles but then when lord vishnu personally comes before him he doesn't like it he steals his wife or attempts to kidnap his wife so actually real religion means to worship vishnu anyone who is performing religious activities without a sense of krishna consciousness ultimately it's contradictory even if you worship lord vishnu for the sake of material enjoyment that's also contradictory because you can't properly worship lord vishnu like that lord vishnu can only properly be worshiped by pure devotional service free from any material desire and the abhilashita shunyam gyana kama bhyanavitam anukulena krishna nishilanam bhakti rutama real bhakti means when there is no personal consideration bhalo odeya janna anavad karo bhalo hote that's real devotional service So here we see Shukracharya he's caught because he's he's also saying to worship Lord Vishnu as a way by by following this Vedic process actually became very powerful powerful enough to overthrow the demigods getting strength from Vishnu ultimately everyone gets strength from Vishnu just like Hiranyakashipu asked Prahlad where do you get your strength from he was surprised 
I got my strength from performing so many austerities. I got benedicted by Lord Brahma. You're just a little kid and you can defy me. Where do you get your strength from? What's the secret? I'm frustrated. So Prahlad, he couldn't answer in a way would be more annoying to Hiranyakashipu. He said that the source of my strength and the source of yours is the same. Only I recognize it and you don't. That's Vishnu. So everyone's getting strength from Vishnu. Even the strength to go against him. Of course, you, ultimately you can't go against. Just like when Rishingadev captured Hiranyakashipu, then again he let him go. Just like a cat plays with a mouse. So Hiranyakashipu was thinking, ah, you see, he let me go because he's afraid of me. But ultimately there was no question that Hiranyakashipu must be killed by Vishnu in the form of Narasimha Deva. Must be killed. So like that, sometimes we're surprised. We see big demons, they seem to be enjoying the world and powerful and so it may be that in previous life they did some kind of pious activity. Not full, really pious means to worship Vishnu. They may have done something to give them such a position, but it is certain that in due course of time they will be smashed by the laws of nature which work under the direction of Vishnu. In fact, to have an opulent position without the, without a sense of Krishna consciousness is most dangerous. If someone is born in a poor family and he's impious, well that is a sign of impiety in itself, to be born, generally speaking, to be born in a poor family. But if one is born in a rich family but has no sense of Bhagavad Bhakti or no piety, that's worse. Because then with your money you'll, you'll engage in all sinful activities and go to hell horribly. There's one story also in Ramayana of the dog who complained to Lord Ramachandra. He complained that I was just lying on the road and this Brahmin came and beat me. So, what are you going to do? You're the king, you should punish him. They called the Brahmin and said, well, what happened? You're a Brahmin and you beat him? He said, yeah, it's true, it wasn't very good, but, uh, you know, I was hungry and it was hot and I was frustrated and no one was giving, I couldn't find anyone to give me anything, so yeah, I beat the dog, it's true. So, Ram said to the dog, so, how do you want him punished? And other people were saying, no, well, a Brahmin shouldn't be punished. Ram said, no, you have to, unless you give some punishment, then how will the people have faith? Otherwise, every, anyone, anyone can do anything wrong. So the dog said, put him in charge of that big mutt. Make him the Acharya. So the Brahmin was very happy. Said, no, really, you're going to put me in charge of the mutt? I mean, I'll be carried on a big palanquin and I'll be in charge of so many people and I'll have so much money at my disposal and hey, that's great, I won't be hungry anymore. I won't have to beat any dogs. So then everyone was surprised. They said, hey, what's that? What kind of a punishment is that? You did something wrong and you're giving him an opulent position? Uh, we can't understand. Ramchandra says, you can't understand, but the dog understands. He understands the laws of nature better than you do. Dog explained. So the dog said, in my last life, I was the head of that mutt. And I did all my duties very nicely. I saw all the servants were fed and everyone was looked after. I don't know what I did wrong, but I did something wrong and somehow I ended up as a dog. So you see, I was practicing my religious principles very nicely, but still I mistreated, a, I must have somehow been mistreated a sadhu. I ended up as a dog. Now look at this guy, you know, he can't even control his, his anger, even slightly. If I put him in charge of that mutt, you can't imagine what kind of a birth he's going to get in his next life. He's going to mistreat people so badly. 
So these are the subtle laws that one may be raised to an opulent position. You see even the Rakshasas, the demons, they may be very opulent. Somehow or other, they may be performing some pious activities. But because they neglect to worship Vishnu, despite all that, they fall down. What is that verse? Yaisham Purusam Sakshat. How does that go? In Bhagavatam. That Nabhagantya and the Anyway, what it means is that if you follow all the Vedic rules and regulations, but you don't, or if you, if you follow the Varnashram system, but you don't worship Vishnu, then you fall down. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quoted, Raravai Pare Madhya. Is that key shlok? Huh? I can't remember. I have the Sanskrit or the Bengali. See what happens when you eat these peace at night. That's my excuse. So, uh, if you don't, if you follow the Varnashram system, but you don't worship Vishnu, then you fall down. Chari Varnashram. Ah, Chari Varnashram Jodi Krishna Hai Bhaji. Shakama Kori Leo Rarave Pare Maji. Even if you follow all the principles of Varnashram, but you don't worship Lord Vishnu, then you do all your swakarma very nicely. Then you fall down into hell. That is called Asuri Varnashram. Even though they're following everything nicely, they don't worship Vishnu. Therefore they fall down. Now, here we see Varnashram Acharavata in the purport Prabhupada says, Purushena Parapuman Vishnura Radhyate Panta Nanya Tattva Shakaranam. The Varnashram system is meant for worshipping Vishnu. And even if you see Shukracharya, he's performing the yoga, you have to worship Vishnu. But there's no sense of Vishnu Bhakti. Superficially, they're offering everything to Vishnu. But you see, when Vishnu comes, he says, no, don't offer anything to him. The very nature of the demons is, uh, Vishnu Bhakta Bhavet Daiva Asura Stad Viparyaya. The nature of the demigod or Daiva devotee is that he is a devotee of Vishnu. And the Asura, his nature is the opposite. He's a non-devotee, anti-devotee. We say abhakta, non-devotee. He should be actually anti-devotee. How do you say that? Pati bhakta. Anti-devotee. Asura. Huh? Abhakta, yeah. But abhakta means non-devotee. But uh, Vaishnava dveshi, Vishnu dveshi. They're against Vishnu. They don't like it at all. Prabhupada defined once, what is a demon? That under no circumstances he will be Krishna conscious. He was determined. Matya na Krishna. I will not be Krishna conscious. Paratasvato va mito bhavad jeta grihavata anam. Adam to go be vishatangam is sampuna punas charvita charvananam. I will not be Krishna conscious. This is the solid vow of a non-devotee, demon. Just like we were taking vows yesterday. Do you dedicate your life to Vishnu? Yes. So the demon, he has dedicated his life. I will not be Krishna conscious. Neither, I, by, by whatever I do, I will not be Krishna conscious. Neither by the efforts of others, nor by philosophical discussion. I am determined that I will live a life of uncontrolled sense enjoyment and go to hell. Chewing the two. This is a non-devotee. Prabhupada is explaining that even, just like you see the devotees, Haridash Thakur, even if he's beaten, he'll not give up his sense of Krishna Bhakti. So a staunch demon, even if he's beaten, even if you tell him he must go to hell, under no circumstances, even if he's philosophically defeated, he'll go through many difficulties, he'll starve, he'll be insulted, but under no circumstances will he admit that Vishnu is superior to him. He may be a, a rickshaw, pulling a rickshaw. Now they don't do that. I think in Calcutta there's still a few left. Hand rickshaws. But even in Kerala you used to see the, they're pulling the rickshaw. And then you speak to them and yes, we're all Bhagawan. I'm also Bhagawan. Such a fool. By his karma, he got the human form of life. 
He has to pull a rickshaw. Even Keralite people, they're usually, they're usually a little philosophical, even if the rickshaw pull it. But uh, thinking I'm God. And why are you pulling the rickshaw in the hot sun with no shoes and the, the ground is burning you underneath? My lila. So offensive. Now, lila means enjoyment. You enjoy what enjoyment? Pulling a rickshaw. But this is the demoniac attitude. So Bali Maharaj, he could understand that even though this is my guru, he's not fit to be a guru. He actually, you see, that officially Sukracharya was the guru of Bali Maharaj, but his real guru by Shiksha was Palad Maharaj from whom he learned that the nine processes of devotional service iti pungsa pita vishnu bhakti chain navalakshana create a bhagavat yadhatan manne bhitam uttamam that this is the topmost learning to be a Prahlad Maharaj told Hiranyakashipu this is the topmost learning to follow the nine processes of bhakti and he told everyone Prahlad Maharaj is a good example of jare deko tare kaha krishna upadesh he taught, he, whatever he spoke to everyone, he spoke to his demon father, he spoke to his demon schoolmates, his school chums, and they were talking about the batting averages and all this kind of thing. He said, no, let's talk about Vishnu. So, he, then later he was speaking to Bali Maharaj, he spoke to everyone. Presumably he must have spoken to the other demons also, but they weren't all very interested. You see, Virochana was his son, he wasn't very interested. I presume then the lad must have married some good demoness who generally the wives have more access to the children, so she must have well programmed. That Virochana, you have to uphold our family tradition. We're all demons here. Hiranya Kashipu also is thinking that my son Pralad, he should be a good demon. Yeah, we should uphold the lineage. I've started this dynasty. We are called the Daityas. And Pallad should be a good emblem of our dynasty, good demon. So Virochana would have given pleasure to Hiranyakashipu by being a nice demon. But uh, Pallad, being the grandfather, had access also to Bali Maharaj. He thought, well, I couldn't make my own son Krishna conscious, so let's see what we'll do with our grandson. So actually, Bali Maharaj is a great devotee and he immediately recognized that even though Shukracharya was officially his guru, he's talking against bhakti. Therefore, guru apiyavalitthatsya, guru. Guru means you have to follow what guru says. Guru means you have to worship as good as God. But guru api, even though he's guru, even though he's guru, guru means you... Gradually you have to accept unquestioning, but the question will come if Guru Api Avalaptasya Kaya Kari Majana Ta Utpanna Pratipanasya Padityago Vidhiyate. The question comes that if he is fallen from the sense of Krishna Bhakti, doesn't know how to instruct you properly, previously was instructing nicely, but now isn't. Padityago, some put in the complete rejection. You must do. That is your duty. Your duty is only to follow your guru. But if you have a so-called guru who is against the sense of Vishnu Bhakti, he must be completely rejected. Sometimes people come to us and they say, well, I like this Krishna Bhakti, I like your movement, but I'm following everything, but I'm already initiated by some bogus Ananda or some... There's so many Anandas, this Ananda, that Ananda. They're all Chida Anandas or Chinmaya. Oh, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to say anything. There's Chinmaya Ananda, Sri Chinmaya Ananda. I guess he's more than Chinmaya Ananda because he's Sri Chinmaya Ananda. So there's so many Anandas. Akhoya Ananda, so many. Chaitanya Ananda. They say they take Chaitanya to mean just. Consciousness. There's some impersonal consciousness. So if you're initiated by such a fool, rascal, demon, you should reject him. Because he's not a devotee. Shat karma nipano vipra mantra tantra visharada 
a Vaishnava Guru Nasyad, Vaishnava Svapacha Guru. If your Guru is very expert, or say my Guru is very expert, he knows many mantras and tantras and karmas and pujas. Very expert. Is he a devotee of Vishnu? No, kick him in the face. Maybe not. I mean, culture is, you're not supposed to kick people in the face. Although Prabhupada used to say things like that. Actually, if they're following the Vedic principles, even then they may be respected somewhat, unless they're an outright Rakshasa, like Ravana. Even Ravana, you see, is born in a Brahmin family. Son of a great Rishi. He's a demon. But, you see, if someone is born in Shvapach family, family of dog eaters, but he's a Vaishnav, he must be a guru. Sometimes we hear, even within our ISKCON, this wrong idea, Ashastriya, against the principles of Shastra. You have to have an Indian guru. Guru must be Indian. Only then can he be a proper guru. That's not according to Shastra. Shastra says, Svapacha, Vaishnava Svapacha Guru. Even if one is born in a family of dog eaters or beef eaters. If he is a Vaishnav, he is a guru. Vai- Who is a Vaishnav is a guru. Every Vaishnav is a guru. Because a Vaishnav, what does he do? Jare Dekha Tare Kaha Krishna Upadesh. He follows Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order to teach everyone about bhakti. Anyone who gives you any instruction about bhakti, he's a guru. Even a Vaishnav, he may be not a preacher. Just like in our line we have Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj. How is he guru? Guru means he should preach. He's also preaching. By his very behavior, he's preaching. Even if he doesn't go out and preach, who is actually situated on the Vaishnav platform, he's also preaching by his behavior. That, uh, what is that verse? Sada chara sa uchate. Peshami acharam yas tu. Sada chara sa uchate. The, the behavior of a sadhu, that is called sada chara, that is proper, be, proper behavior. So even a Vaishnava, by his very behavior, he's preaching. Acharya means by his acharam, by his behavior, he preaches. So every Vaishnava is a guru. There's no question of can be a guru, is a guru, not a guru. Every Vaishnava is a guru. As much as one is worshipping Vishnu, that much he is guru. And if one is not worshipping Vishnu, or if he's against the principles of Vishnu Bhakti, even you see Shukrachari is worshipping Vishnu. But in his heart, he is against the sense of Vishnu Bhakti. He's only doing as a formality. So such a, such a person... Even as expert as Shukracharya, he's so expert that by his manipulation, he was able to empower Bali Maharaj to become so strong he could overcome the heavenly planets. That's not a very easy thing because the demigods, they get their position because of punya karma. In other words, the karmic balance is on their side. But overcoming that, by the tremendous punya generated by Shukracharya, Bali Maharaj was, he went against the universal order and overcame the heavenly planets. He defied the laws of karma. Actually, no one can defy the laws of karma. Whatever you do, you're going to get a result. You can't go against in course of time. That was the mistake. Ravana thought, Hiranyakashipu thought, by our own strength, we shall dominate the universe. Modern scientists think in the same way. By our own strength, we shall dominate the universe. But in course of time, just like that cat and mouse example, there should be some nyai like that. Ma- what would that be? Majara, what's the word for? Majara, what's the word for? Uh, mouse? Mushika. Majara, mushika, nyai. We should make such a... We can make it up. Just like that. In course of time, it must catch up with you. Your karma will catch up with you. 
So defy the laws of karma means that by the strength imbued in Dali Maharaj by performing the sacrifices, he became strong enough so much so that the karmic effect of being the demigod and all the power that goes with it was overturned. So what to do? They required the intervention of Vishnu because the karmic balance, by the power of Shukra Acharya, the karmic balance had been overcome. So the only thing to do was Vishnu has to intervene. Just like if the, in a big chemical plant, if something goes out of order, you can't just go on. You have to call in the expert to put things right. So when things get too much out of order, then it's time for Vishnu to intervene, put, just put everything back in order. That's what he does. The demons are in control, okay. The demons are supposed to be under the demigods, okay, put them back. So, uh, Shukrachari was very powerful. He had given so much to, he couldn't understand why is my disciple doing this? I've done so much for him. But Dali Maharaj thought, no. Actually, you didn't do anything to me. Ultimately, by being my guru, you were cheating me. Most gurus, they think, let me give some material benefit. Actually, they're thinking how I can get something. Guru is thinking how I can get something. Bhavo guruvo santi shishas vita paharaka durlaba sadguru devi shisha santa paharaka there are many gurus who are expert in taking the money of their disciples. But there are very few who can take away the klesha or the uh, distress of, that's the real job of guru, to take away the distress of the disciple. So Shukracharya being a materialist, he thought, I've done, I've done everything for Bali Maharaj. I'm again giving him good advice. Why doesn't, what's wrong with him? Bali Maharaj just thought, what, what kind of a guru are you? You never gave me Vishnu Bhakti. Now I've got the chance. My real guru is Prahlad Maharaj. So you have to see if guru is actually doing the job of guru. He actually has to teach us Krishna Bhakti. If he doesn't teach Krishna Bhakti, he should be rejected. Even if he was previously teaching Krishna Bhakti, if he goes against the sense of Vishnu Bhakti, he should be rejected. So we should understand that the real guru is the one who gives sat upadesha, who gives proper instruction. And proper instruction means instruction to worship Vishnu. Here we see Bali Maharaj rejecting Shukracharya was his official guru because he got proper instruction from Palad Maharaj. Therefore our real process is to follow in the footsteps of the Mahajanas, Mahajano Yenagata Sapanta. Follow in the footsteps of Pallad Maharaj. Follow in the footsteps of Bali Maharaj. He's also Mahajan. Follow in the footsteps of Vyasaki. Who is Vyasaki? Vyasa Putra. Vyasa Suna. The name comes. Sutta Goswami addresses him as Vyasa Suna. Son of Vyasa Deva. Even you won't find Vyasa. He's not in the list of Mahajans. But Vyasaki is. Vyasa Deva, he wrote so many books. The Vyasaki wasn't interested. He thought, God, if I stay at home, they're, they're going to pull out all these books and give me all these rituals to do. Let me get out of here. But then he heard Srimad Bhagavatam. Hey, that's very nice. Let's listen to this. He was at Maram. He was fully satisfied. He didn't want to listen to so many books. Different Puranas and Upanishads and Tattvamasi. What's all that? Tattvamasi. I'm the servant of Krishna. Then he, so he became interested to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the essence. Even Bhakti you know, Thakur said, if you burn all the books in the world, including all the Vedas and the Puranas and the Upanishads and everything else, doesn't matter if you keep Srimad Bhagavatam. So Vyasaki, he was interested in Srimad Bhagavatam. He's a Mahajan. So he had to pick up the teachings of the Mahajans. Even in our own Iskon, we're following Prabhupada, even if someone's guru, he doesn't follow, that is his qualification. He must follow Prabhupada properly, because Prabhupada is representing all the previous Mahajans. So if someone has some other idea, that let's chant Jesu Krista or something like this, 
don't chant Hare Krishna, chant Hare Jesus or something. Let's, let's mix up Christianity and Krishna consciousness. Let's make a new idea. Then uh, you can say, well, we don't care for you. We have to follow what Prabhupada says. We worship our gurus in Iskon because they're faithfully following Prabhupada, teaching what Prabhupada said with the understanding that Prabhupada was the representative of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who wanted Krishna consciousness spread all over the world. So Bali Maharaj is intelligent enough. Dev- devotee also has to be intelligent. Buddhiman. He has to think. He has to see. Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. Even some people, they just say, Prabhupada, Prabhupada. But you also have to see Shastra. Prabhupada came to teach Shastra. He were, he's not like some kind of Sai Baba who just talks all nonsense, whatever he likes. Prabhupada came to teach the Shastra. So you have to follow Prabhupada. If there's any misunderstanding or dispute how to follow Prabhupada, you have to see what Shastra says. And you have to see what Sadhu says, what all the previous Acharyas say. So that requires some in, intelligence and common sense also. If you don't have any common sense, then you can become uncommonly nonsensical. And we're seeing so many things in the name of Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, henceforward the system of management should continue as it is. It's something to do with properties. So that means that uh, whatever all the Shastras say and all the Sadhus say and all the traditions says, no more gurus. We'll become Sikhs. We'll, wor- we'll just worship the book. You just read Prabhupada's book, that's all. And this way you directly connect and where Tadviti Panipatena Pari Prashnena you have any questions you just put it to the book. Well what should I do in this situation? No, you have to you have to go to Guru who as Prabhupada said, Guru will direct you at every moment of your life. How to apply the teachings of Prabhupada that also you require Guru to teach you. But he should teach according to Guru Sadhu Shastra. If he becomes independent of that, then he is fallen and he's not Guru. So these are important points to understand from this section of Bali Maharaj being superficially cheated by Vaman Deva. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? Yes, very good point. Bali Maharaj was mature enough to understand that Shukracharya was not properly worshipping Vishnu, therefore gave him up. But there may be immature disciples who are not. Therefore, this is a very important point. One accepts a guru to come off the neophyte platform and to at least the middle platform of devotional service. If he only accepts a guru as a formality, Only blessings. So I will get blessings. But you have to take knowledge. You have to study Shastra under the direction of a guru. If you think we're... Just like we see, it's very common. In Bengal, it's very common. People say, I will get a guru and get his blessings. That's all. Feed him some fish and get his blessing. Our guru is coming to our village. Get some hilja match. Best fish. In Bodhishara district, they have more. One guru, I, someone told me in, when I was in Bangladesh, said, Oh, our guru, he, ta- he won't come to our village unless they give hilsha match. He only eats hilsha, most tasty fish. He won't come. That's the condition. So, uh, so our guru, can, he gives blessings. We give him fish. You give him umbrella cloth and some shoes and he collects 20 umbrellas in one village and sells them in the bazaar, gets some money for them. In this way he maintains his family, gets his daughters married. So uh, this kind of, uh, we'll only take blessings. No, you have to take knowledge. Guru, actually this is a point that Kundali has made. Maybe too much, but it's, it's an important point that Guru teaches you to discriminate. 
Because it's not that, that the Guru is sitting next to you every moment of your life telling you what to do. The Guru doesn't make you into a robot. That's another misunderstanding. But he gives you the knowledge. He gives you the knowledge by which you can see. Blind man cannot see. So he gives you the knowledge by which you can discriminate between to what to do and what not to do. That is the difference between devotee, pravittincha, nevittincha, janana, vidura, suraha. Those who are demons, they don't know what is to be done and what is not to be done. So Guru gives you the knowledge how to act at every moment so that you are anukul yasya sankalpa pratikul yasya vajanam. Acting in performing activities that are beneficial for developing Vishnu Bhakti and rejecting those which are not. So Guru gives you the knowledge. Sometimes, you, time to time, even a learned person may have to consult Guru. And even sometimes the Guru, he may have to consult others. Because sometimes there may be a very perplexing situation. What to do, what not to do. Some, life is so complex. It may be very perplexing to know what to do. Many times I told that story of Arjuna was ready to kill Yudhishthir. You know that story? Very instructive story. You know that? It comes in Mahabharata that Arjuna was fiercely fighting, of course. When you fight, you don't, you don't fight. Ah, woo, woo. Fiercely fighting. In the meantime, he got the news that Yudhishthira, I think Karna, had really smashed him up. And he was, he was on, in his tent, lying in his tent at the edge of the battlefield, re recovering from his wounds. So Arjuna, somehow the news was relayed. Some messenger got through all the soldiers, relayed that, that the king is seriously injured. So Arjuna just killed a few people around and extricated himself and went off. To find where is Yudhishthir, to find out what's going on. We're fighting this battle for him. Is he going to stay alive or not? If not, then what's the point? So he came into the tent, found Yudhishthir lying down. Arjuna offered his obeisances, and Yudhishthir looked and said, Who's this? Arjuna? What are you doing here? You rascal? What happened? You're not, you're not fit to be being born by the but you are not fit to be born by the semen of our father. You are destroying the good name of all our family. You left the battlefield. You are just a big coward. You might as well throw away your Gandiva bow. He was saying like this because he wanted to get Arjuna really angry to get him back. He said, why you come to see me? You should be back on the battlefield. Go back to fight. That's why he was talking like this. But when he said you should throw away your Gandiva then immediately Arjuna drew out his sword and went towards Yudhishthir. And Krishna, Krishna, of course, was with him because he's his chariot driver. He caught his arm and said, Hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to kill Yudhishthir. What are you, crazy or something? We're fighting this whole battle for the sake of Yudhishthir. And all the enemy forces that we're fighting with, the only thing they want to do is kill Yudhishthir and you're going to do it. Why are you doing it, you fool? And Arjuna said, well, I made a vow when I received this Gandiva bow that if anyone ever told me I should give it up, I will kill them. So that is my vow and I'm going to do it. Krishna said, all right, can you just wait five minutes? Let me tell you one story. How you don't always have to follow your vows. So then Krishna told another story. How there was one Brahmin, he lived in a village. He was living at the edge of a village and his vow is that he will never tell any untruth. Under no circumstances, I will never tell any untruth. I will always be truthful. So he was very respected by all the people of the village. So one day, he was in his village, being, sitting in his house, being truthful. And uh, a man came running. He said, help, help. I've got lots of money. I'm being chased by robbers. Help me. So the Brahmin said, why don't you just go and hide in that clump of trees over there? Okay, good idea. So he ran and hid in the clump of trees. Then three, four minutes later, 
Some more people came running up and they said, Look, we're a gang of robbers. We're chasing uh, this man. He had a lot of money. We want to catch him and kill him and take all his money. Do you know where he is? Yes. Where is he? He's in that clump over there. So they went and found him and killed him and took his money. So the Brahmin, he went through his whole life now telling a lie. When he, when he died, he went to hell. Because there were two religious principles conflicting here. He had to break one of them. One religious principle was to protect an innocent person, especially one who has come to you for shelter. Another one is not to tell a lie. So in this circumstance, he should have told a lie. By not telling a lie, he went to hell. So Krishna said that here you see it's the same thing. One religious principle is you're not supposed to kill your elder brother. You're supposed to offer him all respect. Another religious principle is to fulfill your vow. So what to do? So Krishna gave Arjuna a way out. He said, he quoted from Shastra and said that according to Shastra, if you speak to an elderly person using the tui, two form, I, in what it was that in Sanskrit, tava, like that, the uh, familiar folk, just, I don't know in Tamil, you, you must be having that also. Uh, so just like in, in Bengali, you have to say apni to guru, not to me, or tui. Tui is to someone very junior to you, or, or to a child, or like this. So if you use that form to a superior, it's equivalent to killing them, Shastra says, because it's so insulting. So then, uh, I, so Krishna said, you can fulfill your vow. So then Arjuna, he, uh, he started saying to Yudhishthir, he started insulting him that you're, you're addicted to gambling and you got us all in this trouble. And, all. and he went on for five minutes. And then he fell at Yudhishthir's feet and said, please forgive me. He said, okay, you're forgiven. Get out of the battlefield again! <laughs> so, so there has to be, you see, even religious principles... You need a guru even to, you may say, I'll follow just the book. But then sometimes, what to do? And guru will advise you, you should do like this. And even guru himself, he may sometimes consult someone else. Because dharma is very complex. What is the best thing to do? So many times we find the situation that the parents, the elderly parents, they're meat eaters, everything, still, I'm the only one to look after them, I want to come out and do Bhagavad Bhakti, what can I do? Very common. Even in Russia we find, you see, Russia, there's not much culture. Is that an understatement? What's the nyai for that? But there's still some culture that when the parents are old, then uh, the eldest son should look after them. He should provide them meat and vodka and everything else, but still it's some kind of culture. So we find that many uh, people, they want to, in many instances, now there's no money in Russia, you find people, they want to join our temple full time, but who's going to look after their parents still? You see, even you have to provide them meat, it's a conflict. What to do under the circumstance? Even one guru may advise one way and another may advise another way. That's also there. That's stated in Nectar of Devotion that uh, the basic principles of devotional service are there, but on the details, different gurus may advise differently. So it's quite a complex matter. Follow your guru, as long as he follows guru, sadhu, and shastra. If he doesn't, then he's no longer fit to be guru. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Prabhupada said that. He said that if you read again and again, all answers will be revealed to you. That's also there. How are the gurus in Iskon instructing? By reading Prabhupada's books. You get so... It's amazing how you read again and again, and something you've read, you may, you may have read it five, six times, but exactly how it's relevant, you, you, you don't, you're not thinking, and then... Some problem is there and you read and then it's just revealed. This is exactly the right instruction. 
So many times you find there's some point, some point of contention, then you read and exactly you get the right point. Just like a few months ago, some of you may know, there was a big controversial thing on the internet where myself and others were being called great demons for the, against women's liberation. We don't like this very much. Actually, Prabhupada doesn't like it very much, and it's not Shastra. So, some of these, uh, some of our liberated mothers and their, uh, I guess their liberated husbands or whatever, they were saying that, you know, all these Vedic rules, even if they're quite in Prabhupada's books, it's not relevant to the modern age. It doesn't have any meaning in the modern age. So then I found, just I was reading, and a statement is there in Prabhupada's books that those who are atheists and demons, they think that the Vedic...